how are you enjoying the championship in Melbourne? How, how are you finding the tables? Uh, the tables are more than perfect. Uh, there's no way any player can say that it's uh, not rolling good. We are too glad to be on these tables. They have been done very well. And, and uh, how are you playing yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm be- becoming better with each and every match and hopefully it should become uh, much better this evening when it's required now. <laughs> hey, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, how would you go in your last match? Just just about fell over the line and it felt like anyway. Just about fell over the line. Won by about 100, but it's closer than that. Yeah, it felt, felt a lot closer than that. How are you finding the table? They're nice, they're nice, nice and quick. Bit bit hard to get used to on the cushions and things like that, but um, top of the table I'm finding it difficult, but everything else I'm going all right on. Right. Good, good luck, good luck. Cheers, thanks very much. Okay, so how did you go in your last match? Uh, okay, yeah, I started to play a little bit better. Uh, made 100 and I made 180, so a little bit better. And how are you finding the table? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It's, there's no excuse. It's uh, completely the player's uh, fault. If you break down, it's, the tables are lovely. But they played really well. So, Pina, how, how are you going in the tournament so far? Oh, good. Yeah, queuing well. Yeah. Um, got an easy draw. I've got Jason Caldrock. <laughs> so, yeah, all, all, yeah happy days. <laughs> how, how are you finding the tables? The tables are fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah probably the best conditions. Uh, that we've had over in, in Australia, and why shouldn't it be? What a fantastic club! Uh, you know, supporters are great here, um, and uh, yeah, fantastic table. No, I'm just so tired, mate. I haven't slept. You bust. So how many viewers? Welcome to the RACV Club in Melbourne. Uh, my name's Robbie Foldvari. Great to be here with Dan Lynch for this second session of the semi-final of the World Billiards Championship. Endeavour Life sponsoring this. Peter Tankard, a great, great lover of the game helped out in that respect just getting the table ready to play we've got an exciting match here that's for sure Mike Russell 12 times world champion 541 to Surav Katari the current world champion 514 points can't get much closer Although thinking about it, you can get closer. I got done by nine points uh, in my quarter last 16 match. Uh, but this should be a great game. We're just trying to get the table ready. They've got to put the balls back in the right spot. We've got Mike Russell here. Uh, known him for a long time. I'm just speaking to him. He says 30 years. Uh, 
He used to watch me play in his heyday, but very quickly he came up and it was his heyday. Um, and Surav, remember playing his dad actually, I must be getting old. His dad was world amateur champion. He tried it as a pro as well, not quite as successful, but uh, certainly knows the game. There's a big crowd coming in to watch this semi-final. You're going to see billiards at its best. Mike Russell does need a bit of looking after generally. <laughs> if I may say, won't we get on well together? Um, he said, I shouldn't say too many stories, but we travelled to India many times when there was a professional billiards league there. Um, Hard to believe, but we were on the back and the front page of the papers. I remember once uh, the fans, we were walking outside and the fans started running after us, actually, uh, for our autographs. Um, many adventures. But he's a, he's a great, great player, Mike Russell. Fantastic top-of-the-table player. Floating white. I haven't seen Surav play too much, but obviously he's had a 380 in this tournament, 389 already. So, and he's the world champion. You can't do any better than that. So there's virtually nothing in it because Surav's on a 25 break. So they're going to just remark the balls. Lots of things going on at the RACV Club, Burke Street, Melbourne. It's a great billiard room. Um, I'm very fortunate to be the resident professional here. Uh, RACV changed buildings about 15 years ago. They used to be in Queen Street. Uh, it was a lucky place for me. I won the world title there. And uh, even luckier, I, when I came back from England, from my professional and snooker and billiards career, they were building this club. So the directors got me involved here. Uh, we've got a great billiard room, but also it's building more and more amenities here. Um, lots of restaurants, bars, great gym. So we've got to thank a lot of people for having this tournament on here. Rob Everett, the general manager of RACV Club, is a great supporter of the game. We've also got Mount Compass Golf Course supporting this Silex. Very good at what it does and ergonomic furniture. Reed furniture and Endeavour Life Care. All helping to make this a great tournament as well as the state government. Now I'm not biased, but Victoria, it's the best place to be. We've uh, traveled to more than 40 countries and uh, I was looking for the best place, but silly enough, I was born in the best place, Melbourne, Victoria. So in the background there, we've got the measuring of the balls and you can see there the World Billiards and the IBSF have got together for this tournament which is a great breakthrough thanks to I think <coughs> Barry Jenner as well we're playing on all cock tables they've, they've set up the tables 
they're playing well. Although it's a new cloth, I haven't played on it before, a super fine strawn cloth. To be honest, I was a bit uh, mesmerised by it. Had a few per, few things going on with the with the throw of the ball that were unusual. Uh, it's a new cloth. Uh, it might be because I haven't played for such a long time, but consensus with the other players is the same. It doesn't throw very wide with the soft shots, but uh, power shots it throws very wide and then some shots it plays like an old cloth some shots it plays with a new cloth thank you ladies and gentlemen we're going to get this uh, second session oh, you're in hand of the, uh, so Sarav checks is in in hand as we say that means in the D be good if you could get off to a good start once again, I'll just remind everyone, please make sure your mobile phones are switched off. If the players are playing a stroke lined up in your direction, please do not move when they're on the stroke. Referee Thank explaining you. to the crowd, I think, the situation. <laughs> Can't quite hear. We haven't got sound down here. And that's exactly what he didn't want. I've got to say, I've got, I do have a few stories. That reminds me, I had perfect top of the table in the final against Mark Russell in 1991 in the world final. Start of the second session exactly like that. But the referee couldn't work the scores out and I suddenly just m missed a shot near the opening and I never had another chance really. And it was all pretty even. Something similar to this. But now, that's a beautiful, cute shot, Russell. So has Surav let him off the hook? Yeah, I think he might. He's not sure whether to pot the red or just play a safety shot here. And that is crazily. <laughs> I really thought he wasn't playing the right angle there, but so it might be a bit nervous or not warmed up, or, but both players have made a mistake. Can Russell get out of it? And that's not a good shot at all. Sorry, Mike, but. <coughs> moved on the shot. Very lackadaisical start by Mike Russell. Okay, that's a nice shot. through and he's lucky there that the Reds travelled there, very lucky. Both balls in front of the yellow, easy cannon on. want to get the feel of the table in these early openings even though you play on the same table it can change um, throughout the day the speed depending on the climate the uh, heat in the room Seven 
Now we'll be trying to think of a way to get to the top of the table. And he can push the white maybe a bit closer to the centre pocket. Plan to get an in off the white later on. Got a couple of options here. So he's played for the in off there, but it's not ideal really because he's left the red in the middle of the table there. Yeah, it's an awkward angle. He want, doesn't want to leave the white in Bork. Uncertain. Yeah, no, he had no problem there. So nearly a basic half ball, a little bit of left hand side, but he he's not sure if he wants to hit it harder. But then he might hit the yellow, the white ball, so puts the side on, yeah, and draws level with Mike Russell. Level after more than two hours of play. This is an awkward little shot. You can play the red down to the. Bottom left pocket, get the cannon, but doesn't want the cover. And uh, he's done well there. Cover is when the intervening white ball snookers the, opponent, the striker. little bit short on the pot cleans the ask the referee to clean the the cue ball sort of saying he got a little bit of a kick there beautiful camera angle um, Dan Lynch, cue ball TV. It's been getting better and better at this. We started off at Pulo when I was playing nine ball. That was at earlier times you were videoing everything. You did a good job there too. You so that was probably 10 years ago now. Good shot here. If he can bring the yellow, uh, the white ball over the centre pocket, he can just play that white ball back behind the spot. Looks good to me. Bit thinner cut. Cut the white ball back behind the red spot. There it goes. Virtually perfect. 
and Tammy Cantoni's just walked past, former women's nine ball champion. She's had a go at the billiards. Needs to learn how to play a bit more. Just beginning. Late starter. Now, dangerous times for Mike Russell, really. If he can get his touch here, Surav can knock in two, three hundred quite easily. 63. Yeah, nice touch there. Nice angle here, just off the straight. Oh, oh he's I'm not sure why he's worried about it. just he's just taking his time I uh, wanted to check side because he wants to get behind he wants to stun the ball up high so he can get behind the white ball in the for the cannon after but oh he's looking at his tip that's not a good sign but but yeah that's the classic shot and then he kicks the white ball up closer to the red spot again with a bit of right hand side. 71. And uh, he can go from here. Um, this is basically Murdo Donahue's method. I must say he's the man who used to coach me, contemporary of Walter Lindrum. He drew the diagrams for this floating white. And uh, I must say I used to practice it a lot and I'd like to think um, I did a good job of it at one stage. In fact, when I think about it, Surav's dad once said coming back from the World Championship that uh, Michael Ferreira, ex-former World Champion at my debut, he said that there's a guy playing floating white and he's going to have to practice a lot more to keep up with it. But these guys are bringing it to a whole new level now. Uh, Mike Russell, Gilchrist, and I think probably Surav too. Floating white, there's uh, up and down that line just to either side of the red. It looks easy, but there's touches of side, little angles that you need to produce and perfect control. And he's in the flow of things now. And in these rules, he's got to cross the ball line between 80 and 99, and that's what's happening now. He's in a perfect position. Now, every table's got a bit different angles, but they should be all used to these now. And he come off four cushions. No, he's going slower. So it can drift into the spot. And that's a beautiful shot. Basically perfect. Can run through this, get a cannon, keep the white ball on the line. There it is. So he's still in total control. Now he's going to look for another 100. Seven. Nine. Well, he's got off the line. Now he's going to have to kick the cue ball back. Uh, Russell's cue ball. After a couple of shots and push it back behind the spot. Well, looks easy. I used to be able to do this. I was trying to do it all week. Couldn't do it. <laughs> 14. You need to be calm, cool, get used to the table, cue well. Seven. 
So now he's got the opportunity to push the cue ball back. Russell's cue ball back behind the spot. A bit closer, but he wants to keep it on the side. There's different ways of playing top of the table. Floating white in a rough manner. Floating white exact manner. And then we've got postman's knock where the white ball is trapped. Right on the nameplate behind the red. So classic floating wide. He's moved it round a bit more than he'd probably like, but I'm not sure if he just likes to be that precise or push it round a bit more. 24. Yeah, pushed it up again. Right. I just one of uh, Rob's coming. Who? Twenty-nine. He hasn't been on yet. Yeah. Thirty-two. All right, Surav continues on 145. And he's in pretty good control, but he wants to get this cue ball, the wide ball, back. And this is his opportunity, playing it with lots of left-hand side. Yeah, nice shot. He's back on the line. It's looking dangerous for Russell. A very poor safety shot. So joining me in the commentary box is uh, Rob Hall from England. Um, welcome, Rob. He, I'm not sure how many titles he's won, but he's building on them all the time. So um, maybe you can tell us. Well, Robbie, I haven't won a world title yet compared to your three, but Oh, well, that's I'm all trying. I wanted to hear. No, I'm trying. Well, I, <laughs> And you are. You're a great lover of the game. I can see that. And uh, a gentleman too. Nice guy. Um, that's, that's pretty massive coming from England. <laughs> <laughs> I used to good. love stirring the old English guys because they used to stir me a lot. But no. And he, he's actually bought me a drink too, which I haven't drunk yet. But um, no, welcome in all seriousness. I don't know if you saw the first opening shots, but... Mike played a very poor safety shot and left him in. Um, but you would have played Surav more than me, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've played Surav quite a few times, actually, in the past. Um, he's got the upper hand on me in the last couple of times, but we've had our fair share of <coughs> victories against each other. But the last couple of years, actually, Surav is become a very solid player defending champion well he's got him back at the top and he well he hasn't really left there it's a bit it's not precise but it 
Does he play precise oh. top or just likes no, floating it around yeah, a bit? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a floating white player. Yeah. He doesn't mind this where he's got the the white to one side and he'll just flick it back and forth. Yeah. He's quite comfortable in this position. He's definitely not a postman's knock player. There's not many of those around now. No, I was just saying um, when I first came on the scene, mate, there was Ferreira, who was uh, postman's knock, and Dagley, basically. And then uh, his dad was, when I played in the World Amateur, uh, I played Ferreira, and apparently he came, and Surav's dad said, I, when he met me, he said, oh, Michael Ferreira came back and said, we have to start playing uh, better floating white now because he's seen me play, but now all you guys are playing. I couldn't get 40 of <laughs> this, this week. But anyway. But yeah, but you've, you've had a 20 year sabbatical from the game, so. Yeah, oh, well. Although you use a cue uh, every day of your life, but. Yeah, it's not. Uh, maybe those big nine ball balls have stuffed me about a bit, <laughs> but no. Or the big pockets. Yeah, that too. Well, I deliberately didn't look at those uh, for a. <laughs> for uh, three months to be honest but no it's hard to say there's lots of things the passion and pressure and must say I I will be getting some x-rays on the shoulder as well I've got a few issues so I sound like a whinger but there you go but yeah it's been great part to be a part of this to see all you guys and see the world billiards organized so well I must admit it mate it wanted me to play I was dubious about playing uh, but you know well I think you, when you was made ambassador Robbie that <laughs> you had no choice but to play did you <laughs> well they still I'll said say, I'll say it was a forced hand <laughs> yeah well they did say you don't have to play but I think I should have had to yes well said <laughs> I didn't know what to do my home club I was uh, <coughs> anyway here's a bit of a nice shot it's close to for the run through and I think yeah. he's just missed it. And this game, that's a great break, 205. It's not enough to win the match yet, but I tell you what, puts a bit of pressure on Mike Russell. What does he play here? Does he play the cushion cannon or does he play the plant? Depends where. I don't think the, white, the yellow will run away too much. I think he's got to go cushion cannon. He's going cushion cannon, isn't he? No guaranteed position here, mind. Oh, yes, oh, there was. Good. He's a clever yeah. man in this regard. He did play it exactly like that. Leave the cross half loser. Um, you know, when he's playing well, it's it's beautiful. But apparently he hasn't been doing so well the last year or two. Is that right? Yeah, well, he's... Yeah, not, not by his standards. He hasn't been playing as what he has done in the past past few years, but... Thing is, with Mike, can turn it on at any time. You just get the feeling when he wants to win, he does win. Right. Yeah, I've had a few good battles with him over the years, and um, you know, he's a pleasure to watch. And uh, I think he really mastered. I mean, obviously, his close cannons at the top are great, but he really brought into play the drop cannons accurately to get to the top he's like that but he's a bit unlucky there as soon as I said that this is a bit so, yeah, tricky this is a nice little shot I can't seem to get this probably leave perfect top I would say yeah, 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 so that's his game plays a drop cannon um, I don't think drop cannon is the best way to play, though, Robbie. I don't know about you. No, but, I'll uh, tell you a story if you really want to. I don't want to. Well, it's the only you, topic to talk about it. But we. You've, you've we, twisted my arm, Robbie. Go on. We, tell us. We play. Geet, Mike Russell, and I, and Mark Wilder in Moscow of all places, uh, playing billiards, and snooker, and we, uh, we, Mark Wilder was saying, if we all played our best, who would win? And leading to the point, but it, it's total fiction, he said, I would win. Because in my game, the way I was try to play was no drop cannons. 
being yeah, loaded yeah. as centre, right? Yeah. So then nothing could go wrong. Correct. But um, that was a fictitious argument. <laughs> but but that, that what you're saying, that's why I remember it, uh, is that there is some drop cannons can go wrong, even if you're the best. Uh, Walter Lindrum said in his book, that's how I used to play and get taught by his compatriots, you know, don't play a drop cannon, just get them over the centre and then you can definitely get to the top of the... That's how I used to play and that's why I couldn't get to the top to this week because I couldn't get them over the centre. Yeah, yeah. But that's a poor shot by Russell. He doesn't look on form, to be honest. Uh, yeah, he's certainly battling away here, but see, that's, that's short as well. He's got to try and push the red towards the yellow now. Via one or two in-offs in the middle, maybe. Yeah. He might try and do it in one, cut across the table. Looks a bit narrow. Is it? Yeah. Had to, oh. oh, that's a bad shot. But this is, now this is why I am interested in your comments about this tire, this cloth. What's your comments on this cloth? This is a new cloth to me. Yeah, well, it's, it's the strong, super fine cloth. Uh, I actually think the conditions have been absolutely fantastic. Um, I think the table they're playing on is probably played, out of the eight tables, played a bit heavier than the rest, but it's certainly, um, it's certainly not bad conditions. But uh, what about it compared, what are the, what do you think? compared it to like Strawn 10 or 6 8 double one it's reaction that's what I'm asking well I think it's bang in the middle of the two I don't think it's reactors of uh, as strong 10 but I think it's more reactive than the, the 6 8 double one I, I think that the strong super fine has been brought in as a competitor to the latest Hainsworth cloths yeah um, probably something similar to the Hainsworth match cloth which is lighter than the 6811, but not as light as the, the strong number 10. So I think they needed to bring a product out that fills that gap. And this is the one they've brought out. Yeah. But personally, I think the cloths played very, the cloths on all the tables have played very well. I, I think, because I was looking, you know, I used to play on the professional snooker cloth. I think it's fast, but on the forcing shot, it throw. It, there's plenty of reaction, but if you had a soft shot, it runs through more, just like what happened with Russell. And I, I and there's a nice what you call a fluke. <laughs> and he's left, he's left it, he's left it in not a bad position. That's the that's the other thing. You can get a fluke, but what's left afterwards? He's actually played the in off and. He was kind of hoping for a six shot there, I think, when it's when the red's gone in. But yeah. As it's come out, he's, he's, Although he's come out well. Although you never play the six shot, you know that. No, no, no. He didn't. He, I, don't, I think he... he was he should he very didn't. rarely play multi-scoring shots. That's to right. To be quite honest, because that's there's never a guarantee there. Yeah. But anyway, that's what got me. I don't know. I think it runs through a bit, and then... It, doesn't grip quite as much but when you play with a bit of power it grips a lot that's yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know I wasn't cueing that well so but that's my thoughts on it but as you know it's also the conditions that may you know the the humidity the temperature that makes for the reactions of the cloth absolutely yeah it's been it's been quite cool in the in the billiard room this week and I'm not sure that's um, helped the reaction of the cloth yeah, but don't get me wrong. It's I agree. It's conditions are good. They're good for break making. Oh, yeah. You get used to it. Um, you know, we've had uh, four four uh, sixty three. David Causia. Yeah, but he could make that on an Axminster carpet, though. Yeah, that's well, that's true. He doesn't care what what uh, <laughs> cloth. It is. I don't even think he knows what the cloths are. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, I mean, there's been the big hype about the thousand break and the yeah. twenty-four thousand dollars. And to be honest with you, I don't think you could ask for any more. You know, the conditions have been as good as they could be to have to have that threshold. No, I thought they would be. Look, the pockets are playing. You know, quite generous. Um, yeah, the pocket, the pockets are fine. The yeah. cloth's great. Yeah, the, they're all the new tables. Are, yeah. There's been no crazy bounces off the off the cushions, so there's been no 
you know, if there was going to be a thousand brake made, yeah, these are probably the conditions you would want to make them. I think you're to make right. Make the brake, yeah. but I think we've got to the stage of the competition now where it's it's all about winning. Yeah, puts in a thousand brake at the end of the day, there's going to have to be a few risks taken to make the thousand brake. Well, and we've got yeah. to the stage of the competition now where you almost need to play risk-free billiards to, to win. Well, there's another mistake. Only little, it's come out. Yeah. But um, saying that, once you're getting to four, five hundred and near the, near the, once you're in the break, you can still do it. I mean, uh, you look for those big breaks. If you just do the right shot, they'll keep coming. But you need a bit of luck for a big, massive break. I'm thinking yeah. more, you know, people are playing now for a week. That can get a bit tired, you know, and the tension of just playing, the, the matches can take it out of you as well. Yeah, it's, it's been a busy schedule, really, when you That's think right. about it. I mean, what are we? We're uh, half an hour into this session, so these guys have been playing five and a half hours a day already. So... I don't think the billiards is going to get a lot better, to be honest. Yeah. People don't realise it's billiards, you have to be pretty fit. I think fitter than um, snooker and definitely fitter than pool. Um, to, on pool, the end do, you, of slot. do you play pool, Robbie? I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm the current Australian Open 8 ball champion, American pool. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I've won, I've won oh. a few national titles. I thought I'd just try and di diverge from this game, the master game. Bit of a bit of a parlor game, though, Paul. Isn't it? Well, you guys will look at it that way. I don't. I look at it as just another form. I think the creativity in nine ball. I'm, I'm think nine I'd, ball. That's the easier for them all, isn't it? Well, if pockets you're, are quite big. Let me, let me tell you this, Rob, if you want, ever want a game and I'm pl play again, we'll have a game, but not a short race. Oh, what, because you might get beaten in the short race? Yeah, well, it's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious. Anybody can beat anybody at nine ball in a short game. But, look, every game has its merits. And, um, yeah, the problem with the snooker billiard players, think the easiest pot... Um, well, the hardest pot in snooker is down the rails, whereas in nine yeah, yeah. ball is the easiest. Uh, but the open table, and now the pockets are a bit tighter, but I think eight, pub pool, we're not talking pub pool, we're talking... A, Easier a, pool than pub pool. The really big pockets. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll say you've had a drink, but uh, he's trying to wind me up, folks, but... <laughs> but really, he's doing a good job. Um, but really and truly, every game has got a lot of skill, yeah, I'll no, tell you. There is skill in every Q sport. I'll tell you no what. And one, the skills differ, actually. That's exactly right. The, sk the skills do differ. I'll tell you one thing. See, nine ball is all about a, a break, isn't it? Yeah, You've but it's it. also position. You know, we're not. I'll tell you the same thing in every game. At the top level, you play... a billiards professional match, a snooker professional match and an American pool professional match. If you miss one shot, you may well lose the whole match. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. standard is there is the same. There's more shots in I Anyway, we could argue that forever, so we're not going to now. But I'll tell you what, I've been national champion at every game and I'll tell you what, they're, both, they're all good games and they're all different skills. But the best players at each of them, I'm talking like Efren Reyes, Steve Davis, yeah, yeah. Mike yeah. Russell, they're all really great players. So Cathar is here, he's, he's 50 break, he's got a nice drop cannon. He's now close to 200 in front. I would say he's in a pretty strong position right now. Yeah, well, if he can hold the table now a bit longer, there's, it's that narrow again. Now he's got... The, oh, that's a nice cannon. Probably... I think he's got a thin enough red to leave an enough. Yeah. Pretty slow. Oh, now he's gone hard. Not 
Mm. See, in this game, you've got options. Right. We won't go on anymore, but in pool, you've got to have that one shot. Paul, you're obsessed by pool, Robbie. No, you brought it up. I didn't even want to bring it up. Why I'm are you saying obsessed this by the easy games? <laughs> I'm not obsessed at all. I was obsessed mainly with this game. This is the grand game. This is the mother of all games. That's good to hear, actually. actually that's good English to hear. billiards, there's more scoring shots uh, and than any other game, and there's more, there's more shots in terms of you've got to perfect them. So don't worry about that. I'm, uh, I love this game. The real reason I haven't been playing is because I respect it too much. You really have to put in a lot of time, as I said, and effort to be at the highest level. And I wasn't prepared to do that for the last few years. So to all the, all the people out there, I love this game. Uh, and once you get into it, People don't stop playing this game. It's addictive, isn't it? It's yeah, addictive. It is. That's the problem. There's people, with it. there's people in this club and around Melbourne, 90 years of age. They still play their game of billiards every, every day, every second day, and they're still pretty good too. Uh, it is a really great game. I think it's more forgiving a, a game regarding age because. As we, as we know, the, the in-off game is a little bit more forgiving than the Potter's game, so there's a little bit more margin for error on contact points, etc. So. Oh, so you're saying billiards is the easier game? and then uh, No, well, well I'm just not get saying you back the there. Easier game. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the easier game, because the concentration in billiards is the key. Of course it is. It's the mental part uh, of billiards. You started it. I'm on it, but I'm yeah. You st yeah well, I'll start <laughs> it and I'll finish it if you want. It's fine. No, I'll finish it. <laughs> no, he's... Um, they're all great, but yeah, as, but it is addictive. Um, we got Steve Mifford behind us. He, uh, I've, he I've heard of him. I've heard of Steve he, Mifford. He's just loving billiards more and more. He's actually the only tour snooker player who entered this event. Well, the Maltese magician, they call him. <coughs> he's Australian. What are you talking about? Yeah, he's Maltese. <laughs> He's Maltese. He's a European. My, uh, you know, I have to teach you quite a few things. If right? there was a Ryder Cup of billiards, he'd be playing for Europe. No, he wouldn't. Or he wouldn't be. Uh, he wouldn't be allowed to play. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever he is, he's gone and oh, uh, getting close. Harsh. Well, he's gone. Harsh. He's left. The, he's left our area. But uh, what I was going to say oh, was that. that oh, 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 oh that oh, Mike was Russell was nearly gone, but luckily for him, Surav's missed, but he's left it in the jaws. I don't think it's inoffable, so. Inoffable, is that a word, Robbie? That's one of my words. That's good. I'm, I'm you know what, I'm, I'm, not, I'm used to. You're a to, genius. I'm used to dealing with better, you know, more professional commentators, you know that. So they take the piss, you know. <laughs> Language. You're live on YouTube. <laughs> but I think, uh, sir, I've just caught that in off a bit thick, actually. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying about this cloth too. If you don't watch it, it does come th run through a bit. Now, now people might think that's a good safety shot for the <coughs> for the layman, but it's not. He hasn't left himself a good neck shot. No, there's no there's no way, sir. I was going to try and move those balls from there. No, just looking where he wants to place his cue ball. Whatever happens, Mike's got a hard shot or uh, a safety shot back. He's actually got to leave this this next shot for Mike as a safety shot, but as hard as possible. So I think he's leaving the easy one here. I've tried to put more distance between the two balls there myself. But. That's actually a good shot for Mike there. There is actually a shot on here if, if you wanted to risk it, double kiss cannon, but it's exactly on, but there's a risk. And why should he when he's in front? 
90 degree angle from the uh, half ball double kiss, Robbie. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it was, it it's a good, one, it? it's a good gathering shot at the top of the table the other way. Yeah, you know that one. Yeah, I know that one. It's a, it's a nice looking shot. But like you say, 200 in front. There's no point risking that. So I think we've got ourselves into a little bit of a safety battle here. And billiards is normally a very attacking game, but it can happen in this situation, for sure, where the safety shots can go on for quite a long time. Well, there's no way Cathari here is going to take any risks trying to score, because... He, tr he did actually try to the double, did he? Which was a bit risky, actually. He didn't need to do that. I think Mark will try the dead weight pot here. Yeah, this is, the, this is what he wants to do, and then he can take the upper hand. And that's not hard enough. I mean, you play the dead weight pot and you can even nearly get a jaw snooker sometime. But you should have. Could he go thin off the white? Well, this Left is, a, white, I hate right to tell side. you this, but this is exactly the shot that uh, my Burmese opponent had. Burmese? Or Myanmar man. Uh, let's get it correct. Sorry. Uh, when I was 91 in front. <coughs> oh, Nathway. Nathway, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. <coughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. And he made 100 unfinished to yeah, win yeah. by nine. That was exactly the shot. I, I want to go back and cry for a minute. And then no, 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 no. He's a good great... player. I've, I've known Nathway for a few years now. But it was a great break to win, that's for sure. He's but that um, shot, is, I still like He's a deceptively good player. Yeah. He's a little bit unorthodox in the way he plays, but... His touch is actually very, very good. Yeah, well, he made 100 and finished. Uh, and from that situation, now Russell's miss, but it's the way Mike's missing that looks like I don't think he's in the game, to be honest. If that stays out, then it's just gone in. It doesn't I think matter. he'll play he's enough white. Yeah. Uh, no, I think he can get a cannon here off the cushion. This is where you've got to get right behind it. It's got a sort of a looks like a sort of top t top of the table situation you know it can be off off the top cushion but it's missable there's a lot yeah, bigger yeah. gap there's a big distance there isn't it i wouldn't surprised if you played the the slow the slowish in off white just to push it just out of book to leave the cannon oh, i don't know if he can get through rob yeah Oh no. Ooh. No, that's even well, that's, better. That's a positive shot. Yeah, and he's left a beautiful in off there, I think. Nearly both Choice ways. Choice of, yeah. Choice of. Obviously, the white wasn't that good because he would have taken it to get the cue ball out of ball. So he's going to play in off reds here and probably till he can leave a, a pot red in the middle to leave the perfect angle for the in off white. Yeah, and this is where it's like chess. We know what he's trying to do. He's already, it's just on the borderline, and he's worried too, if I may say, how wide it's going to throw. Yeah. He, and this is where... He's probably going to be playing this with a little bit of running, isn't he? Yeah, Which a lot. Is a little bit dicey on he's this He's getting table. down on the ball. Yeah, yeah, he had to put a lot of right-hand side on that. I think that's short. Yeah, well, he's hit down on it. Of course, left the pace of it, stopped the pace a bit. But, yeah, he's... He's trying to get. So that what do you point. do here, Robbie? Swing it round to the middle bag, or I always, it short? I always used to swing it round, but um, what do you do? Well, sliding tables like this, I'll be tempted to leave it short. Pyramid spot. Oh, he's gone for it. Yeah, no, that's the right shot. Just avoided the middle bag there. Because um, you know when the the tables slide like this, it's it's easy just to. To threaten that middle pocket. Yeah, but with you're. The red. Yeah, but there's. A, you hit it a bit thinner. Ooh. I mean, you're not brought up on these sort of tables. That's where I think you do have to play it a bit different. So you would. You're right because of that. But because you're, well, the professional tables or the English tables, they are a bit squarer in general, even when you recover them. That was my. I don't know if it's changed, but that's the star tables and all those sort of tables. So he's, he's still looking for the enough wire Yeah, well now he's got a good chance. He's, he can control it well. 
by a little stun shot or come off the cushion. Looks pretty good, I think. Uh, and if it isn't, he's got a pot a red. Uh, he won. It. It's the right shot, but looks like he's putting a bit of left on it to swing it in a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, always the right shot. So, hour and 15 minutes left. 250 odd points. Not quite, but times are getting critical. Oh, he's might have in off the wide as well there if you wanted. I think that'd be a bit of a stun shot, wouldn't it? I think he's going to take a couple of pots before he leaves that in off. Yeah. Oh, he shakes his head, got slightly the wrong angle, but he, I, w I wouldn't be too worried. Okay, left himself a nice sin off here. He can maybe bring the white behind the spot here. Oh, nearly a bit thin again. So we've just been joined in the commentary box by Michael Pearson. He's got a very similar hairstyle to Robbie Volvari. <laughs> or lack of hairstyle, she would no. say. I would say it's a good hairstyle. Um, yeah, I'll, well, somehow, though, he just doesn't look as good as me, does he? I think it's the goatee, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like I say head, that with a smile like on my face, on upside Michael. Down. I got the poster. That's because they thought it was me to be. Oh, I have to tell you the truth. I'll give you one of my posters later, mate. It's all right. <laughs> oh, oh, we've got, oh no. have we got the cover here? No, it might just be. Well, no. you can play with side anyway, off the cushion, if he hasn't. Oh, it's direct. Isn't it? Oh, he's even. Gee, that's a good shot. Wouldn't do that leave a cannon back to get good position. Gee, would you have played it like that? I'll come back off the other cushion. Uh, we've got Matthew Bolton making cheeky comments. Welcome, Matthew. Uh, had a had a chances today. Long time, what? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's right. And another few hundred shots. <laughs> he's actually in not bad position here, is he? Pots of thin red, he's back across the other side. No, yeah, he's put a bit yeah. could have put a bit of check on it, but anyway, he's just cruising. Russell hasn't looked like scoring really. Just doesn't look with it. So and that makes it better for him because he, he does, he's not under as much pressure you know when somebody your opponent doesn't look so hot mm, he's played that well left himself an easy enough back up towards the middle pockets oh I think that's classed as a butchered shot actually 
Well, let's see if he can recover. Well, he's oh. just whacked it. The cause here. Is that, is that smash cannon? Is that what? Is that what you would play, Matthew? In the UK, that's actually called the Norfolk Cannon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll tell you something. To leave nurseries. Look. Yeah. <laughs> I th when uh, Dave Corsier started, me and Mike were watching him, and we we said, "How's he fluking position all the time?" After the second year, we said, "He's not fluking it." <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's some magic. So. It's sort of, so it's running with him, and he's playing better. So that leads to the fact that he's probably going to win this. There you are. Now I've mozzed him. Yeah. We should have a close game. He's just going to play the very slow off here, I'd imagine, to leave the drop cannon. Yeah, he's had a look at it. Yeah, good position now. Yeah, one good drop cannon. He wants to clean it. He's always wanted clean balls as Kathari. Likes the referee to get the gloves on the balls. So now, well, it might be a bit straight, but he's so close to perfect top now. Yeah, yeah didn't want to risk it. If he was practicing, he could punch that ball in and come off the cushion. But uh, he knows victory is nearly in sight. So an hour and nine minutes and 300-ish in front. I think if he makes a 150 here, then Mark's in trouble. What do you think of these cloths, Matthew? 88. Compared to the other two types? Uh, no good because I lost. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, they're no. nice. Yeah, cloths are good. <laughs> Just. <laughs> no, the cloths are good. No excuses in the but condition. They do play. Um, yeah, they're good. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. the differences. No, they just, um, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful with them, obviously, but, uh, 93, <coughs> cross. no complaints. He's actually played that ball line cross really well. Mm, no He's left himself the perfect angle then. I just think they're a bit different. I, we, I discussed it with Rob, but sometimes it doesn't throw as wide as I thought. Other yeah. times it does when you hit it hard. But yeah, yeah it's just yeah. different, that's all. Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah. Did you feel you had to take a little bit more time over the shots, Robbie, on these cloths? Or? Uh, no, just had to get them. <laughs> So now he can just 
throw that cue ball behind the spot on that line. And uh, these, the top players now can get top of the table at will when they're on, in form. It's just a matter of staying there. Well. Leave an angle on the pot, red, which he's done. Starting to flow a bit more. Confidence building. Still hope. Slight Massey shot. <coughs> well, can he just pot it? Very close. It's not a hard Massey to just pot that ball. Oh, well, a bit of drama, but there wasn't too much to it. Just probably was just not happy with the shot. Yeah, now the real shot is to stun it round the table, but um, because the cue ball, the white ball, is on the wrong side, and he's played it the right way. That tells me he's well and truly confident now, and that also tells me Mike Russell, who's hardly scored a point in this session is under all sorts of pressure now. Oh, but he's let him off again. Lack of concentration there. Wanted to hit that red ball quite a bit thicker. He's got an in off red, but I suppose it is missable. Highly unlikely, but... And, oh, there's a bit of luck. That's what you want. Just decided to go in. So Surav's had a bit of fortune when he played that wild cannon, brought them together. Now just getting that in off. And one nice pot, perfect position, awaits. And Neil Brown is refereeing, very experienced, used to play with him in the juniors actually, um, knows the game, very good referee. It's not an easy job refereeing billiards, you've got to concentrate a lot and it, I think it makes more of an impact on the play too. The way you pull the balls out, the way you score, you're more involved in the game. 46. Bit of check side here to just get closer to the spot. 39. Break of, oh, he's under hit that too. Perfect position and didn't screw back far enough. That's the other thing. But anyway, he's got a shot on, but it's not nice. He can screw off the red or the white for a cannon, but it's all about the position. He's very disappointed with himself. He knows if he stayed at top <coughs> much longer, the final await, so screw double kiss oh that's not what he wanted either jab that a bit so now he's got a hard shot there is a pot on in the center which uh, as you can see by the distance isn't much you can screw in off it as well and no problem so back to work Fifty-nine. 
still shaking his head about how he's mucked all that up, but... Uh, he's coming back to it pretty well. Oh, that's an understatement. Great shot. Right behind the spot and the red awaits the pot. Let's brush his feet again. Doesn't matter though, as long as it keeps going. 161, a four break. He's got to start thinking soon about ball climb crossing again. He's completely lost concentration, but he's still going. For him, he's played a lot of poor shots in this last five minutes. Uh, I reckon Mike Russell won't, might be starting to shake his head too soon. Screw back. Wants the cannon. Kiss cannon. No. So awkward again. problem here is if he screws off the white ball he might pot the white so he doesn't want to do that yeah oh he's mishit that he's totally lost his timing he wanted to push that red oh well I would have maybe he didn't he wanted the cannon on so he's got an in off white which he ah, he's going to play the run through he wants to doesn't look like the right angle to me yep so he's going to pot the white and that's going to be the end of the break. So 175 to Surav Katari. Not much Russell can do here. He tells Surav to sit down. It's not going to help him much. <laughs> he had to get up straight away anyway. <laughs> oh dear. That's a nice shot too. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Andrew Hicks has just joined me. Um, very good snooker and billiards player. Doesn't play too much competition nowadays, but uh, he's been watching the game avidly. So welcome, Andrew. Thanks, Robbie. It's nice to be here again tonight. Watch the the world's best in action. It's um, good to see them after 84 years of the World Beards Championship coming to Australia. Let's hope it's not another 84 years before we see them again. Well, we're at the critical stage of this match too because Mike Russell <coughs> must make a break. It's exactly 400 the difference. Now, he's made many 400s in his life, but something, I don't know, oh, he's just looking at the score, the time. This is a big big time in the game and 
Seems very relaxed, but he really hasn't looked like scoring. He's just been way off. But let's see what he can do. Yeah, it's probably not exactly. He didn't even come around to look at the exact angle. But. Doesn't want the cannon on this red. And he's got it. That might be all right. Could be a good time for a thousand break. Yeah. Spoil the party for Sir Ove. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, a thousand. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> It'd be a good time for 500, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, question without notice in snooker how when player's on a maximum break and he's got about two reds left and the protocol is for the rest of the tables to stop. Is there any protocol if a player's heading towards a thousand break, if he's on the 800s or 900s, you're probably the best person to answer this, being a, uh, a fellow thousand break maker as well. Yeah, well, I... Um, uh, would it be 900 that the, the the rest of the tables would stop just to... Oh, no, we go just stop at line? the last few minutes. But it, trouble is, with billiards, it's a, if there's other matches, it's a time game. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't, I don't think everybody would be switched on enough to stop the clock. But anyway, yeah. that's a good thought, but he's missed already. So he yep. was only, uh, like I said, he, he just doesn't look like, he doesn't look like making a 50 break, to be fair. I don't know what's the matter with him. He's had a, he was very relaxed before the interval. Uh, I mean, yeah, before this session, mm -hmm. maybe too relaxed. Oh. Now, once again, I don't know if Sarav's thinking he's got the, he's near the end of the, because he's not playing well either now. He might be thinking of winning. Six. But he's made sure of that cannon. Watching Russell's game last night against Steve in the last 16, he, he came out of the blocks with a 270-something, and then he seemed to be out of sorts for the rest of the match. Right. I don't know if Steve slowly reeled him in. Uh, it was a potential for a big upset there but just a couple of shots went went begging for Steve and Russell was able to get over the line with a 70 on at the end oh, okay. to win by 100 but he was he was nowhere near the, the the player that he's capable of being yeah yeah I've heard that but yeah his, his concentration isn't as good but <laughs> you know I, I don't know he's he might have a few personal issues I don't know you know the game isn't just about the skill it's about concentration, what's going on in your mind. That's, that's the difference, you know, in form, out of form. I suppose a lot of mental concentration too for the amount of hours that they've played to get to this point. Yeah. You're looking at probably you know, 14, 15, maybe more hours with round robins and, and finals, plus the World Open the week before. Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. You've got to be fit mentally and physically for English billiards for sure no, that's not an ideal shot he didn't want to push the white into the jaws but in a minute it won't matter what he does I mean Russell can make hundreds in five minutes easy at the top of the table so it's still possible it's just the way he's playing is the thing. I haven't seen him play much, although I did. He did knock me out in the last date in the World Open, and he was a lot more. He looked a lot better then, <laughs> maybe because I was playing him. But no, he made century after century. He made 130 first shot. He looked like maybe he wanted to welcome me back or something, <laughs> but. And being a short time match too, it probably whoever gets in first yeah, has the got a sense a very of urgency. Good, yeah, but good advantage. But really, no, he looked like he was queuing well. He's not looking like he's queuing the same. Might be a cover here. Yeah, maybe. No, he could run through. It's all going to go well for him. You can tell. And David Corsier uh, from the RACV club.
uh, in Melbourne from our great club and from the World Billiards Association. All the best and we'll see you soon.